You guys had a ton of pressure, a ton of chances through really about 40 minutes last night. Look, I, I know you guys want actual victories, not moral victories, but is there some progress or momentum that you think you can build on there? Yeah, I think we have to find, you know, some positives to build on and kind of go on. Um, yeah, you know, I think that first period could have been easily, you know, one nothing, 2 nothing, 3 nothing after some of the looks we had and some of the pucks that, you know, squeaked through but didn't go in the net and stuff like that. And I think, you know, we come out that way. Most games, we're going to have a, a lot better result. Playing Calgary tomorrow, I'm wondering from your hockey career, and it doesn't have to be NHL, you can go back to as far as you want. <laughs> What's the most heated rivalry you've ever been a part of or a memorable game maybe against a rival team? Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't really know. I mean, I don't think anything I've ever played in compares to what you know, the Battle of Alberta is both to the teams and to, you know, the province and, and that kind of thing. You know, I, you know, the minors and in junior, you play a lot of games against the same teams just because of travel more than anything. But those rivalries are, aren't quite what, what this one is. So it's obviously uh, added, uh, it's added pressure, added excitement, added, you know, whatever you want to, uh, you know, come in and uh, have a good effort. Did you, uh, when you were younger, like before you were in the NHL or a kid, did you watch uh, Edmonton Calgary or was there a rivalry you liked watching I remember I did watch the Calgary Edmonton stuff I remember growing up the, the Detroit Colorado rivalries it seemed like they, they seemed to run, each other, run into each other in the playoffs you know every year there in the you know, eight, late 90s early 2000s kind of when I was really getting big into you know watching it and stuff like that but yeah you, you, being in Alberta and growing up you see the the highlights from you know generations of uh, of what this you know rivalry means you you grew up in central Alberta. Was your house a Flames house or an Oilers house? We didn't know. My dad wasn't, doesn't, never really had a team, so even growing up, we never really had a team in the league. We, we watched hockey and enjoyed you know, good games and stuff like that. We were never a uh, house that had a team that we uh, cheered for religiously. We watched them, uh, you know, obviously, like any fan does, interested in, the, uh, in how the game's going to go and knowing it was going to be an intense game, but there was never a, uh, we never had sides pick necessarily. Hmm. Um, back to this team. Uh, you guys have had uh, nine, allowed nine goals in the last two third periods, uh, a sign clearly of games that have run away on you a little bit. Um, how easy is that to flush and, and what do you think the cause of it is? Uh, how easy is it to flush? And not necessarily easy because, you know, especially the, the Ottawa one was a game where we, you know, you want to close that one out considering the, the, the situation starting the period. But we have to find a way to flush it and move on. And if we dwell on it, so that's not going to really uh, do us any good. We can learn from it, but dwelling and that's not going to help us going forward at all. Um, you know, not sure the cause. It seems like when, uh, you know, we give one up or whatever, it seems like we aren't able to kind of stop it there. It kind of snowballs a little bit. That's something, again, we can watch and learn and try and figure out why that's happening and, uh, you know, prevent that from happening going forward. Uh, last one for me. There's a couple guys here that are under intense pressure. Uh, I know that you all are, but in particular, your goaltender and your head coach. These aren't good times for either of those guys. What... What responsibility or how does the team feel about that when you're going out in the ice knowing that the whole hockey world is looking at these guys and asking questions? What do you, you know, how do you approach that? Or I mean, you, you feel responsible. It's, it's, you can say one or two guys or this or that, but it's, you know, it's, it's a team sport. There's, there's 20 of us dressed a night and there's five, six guys on the ice at a time depending on the situation. And it's, it's much as people want to say it's one guy or one thing or another, it's, you know, it's, it's on all of us. And, you know, I think when you hear the talk, and it's hard not to hear it, that you, you can't help but feel responsible that there's something you could be doing differently in certain situations to help, you know, your teammates and the other guys on the ice out. And I think that's kind of, I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels, looks at themselves and kind of tries to figure out how they can do something differently to, uh, you know, to benefit the team and help out everyone, make everyone look better. Bolton over here, left here. Uh, I'm not sure if yesterday's game is, or the game tape from yesterday is one that you look back on or just simply throw away, but what were maybe the biggest correctable components that you saw from yesterday? 
Um, I mean, it's easy to say, but you know, we, we, we got to find a way to score in that first period or even you know the first 30 minutes, and that's a different game, right? We had we had the looks. You know, I think every line had a couple of looks around the net with opportunities to uh, to get one in. You know, with, it's easy to say score; it's harder to do it. But you know, if you find a way to get a goal there, you know that changes that potentially changes the entire game. And I think that's say the most correctable, but it's also not necessarily the easiest at the same time. And uh, a few days ago, Brendan Perlini just kind of talked about his philosophy and approach um, to the rink and, and when he's, you know, a team's in a bit of a rut. Do you have an approach or an outlook that you take to the rink when uh, things are kind of going sideways and just to stay positive? Yeah, you know, I think it's easy when things are going bad to get to dwell on the negatives. You know, just try to find positives either in your game or in the way you've played in your career at this level or at other levels and try and focus on those those things that have led to success. You know, everyone's had success to get to this level at, at some point or at multiple points and you can find some of those positive aspects and kind of focus on that. The rest of the game will kind of uh, kind of come with you. Um, it's kind of what I try to do. Sometimes easier said than done, but that's kind of the, the attempted focus. Colton, um as, as tough as things are going right now, you have a really good opportunity tomorrow. Big game, Hockey Night Canada, big rival. How big would a win, a good effort and a good win, help in kind of mending things and, and getting them back in the right direction? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, obviously, yeah, it's it's not going the way uh, anyone had hoped or anyone anyone wanted. You know, it's we're one win away from starting some starting a positive streak. You know, flipping it and going on a kind of run that we did at the beginning of the year and stuff like that. Getting a win. Of any sorts, is huge. A win against you know a provincial rival on a Saturday night. Going into a schedule, uh, part of the schedule we're playing every other night, we can get some you know momentum and some something going that way. You know that that would be huge. That's got to be our focus. That's got to be our, our goal, and we got to find a way to do it. And you don't have to stew on that loss for five days like you did the previous one. Because how much does that help? Just getting back on the horse, and and now hopefully you get in a bit of a rhythm where you're playing every other night. You're playing lots of games, and you can kind of you know, get in that back in that rhythm you guys were at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I think that's, I think everyone in that room is excited about the fact that we're kind of into a stretch of what should be normal game-wise with games every other day, you know, a couple, two days between, but that's about it here leading up to the break and then after that, the rest of the year kind of thing. And I think with those kind of games or those kind of stretches where you don't have the time to sit and stew and, you know, overanalyze every little aspect, it can, uh, can help. He said we get, we get a win tomorrow night and get going and then, you know, go from there and kind of, you know, put this behind us. Thanks, Colt.